Hi, I'm Carrie. Welcome to my channel. Today is my monthly wrap up. So we are going to talk about all things in my tarot practice that happened in October on top of the new goodies that I got in because I have quite a few of those things to share with you and anything personal that I'd like to share. First, I want to say a big warm welcome to everybody that came and watched my um, ancestor uh, ancestor mini series that I did in the month of October. Thanks so much for subscribing and hanging out on my channel. I really appreciate that. And I hope you stick around and continue to find things that you enjoy watching here on this channel. So let's talk about why I have my other tablet here on, um, in this video so I can move it out of the way and get to all the good stuff. So I wanted to talk about my Discord channel. And for those of you that don't know, I do have a Discord channel and the link is going to be in the description box below. That link's only gonna be good for seven days, I believe. But if you're on my Instagram, I think I have a link in my profile that doesn't expire there. So you might wanna check um, that out if this one is no longer available. I am trying to grow a community form a community, create a community on my Discord server. And for those of you that don't do Discord, because trust me, I am brand new to the game of it. It's a free service. Um, there are paid options or whatever, but this uh, server that I have set up is a free service, so it doesn't cost anything. And <clears throat> why I am, I guess, leaning into my Discord channel is because I, I was asked if I was going to create memberships here on the channel and I have thought about it. I already have the okay from YouTube to start those, but I'm not ready to do it. Um, I have some things going on with a family member. I don't know where things are going into the next year and what kind of time that's going to take from me. So because of that, I don't want to dedicate myself to something that I may not be able to fulfill. I thought the best option would be Discord that doesn't cost anything and just take things day by day there and then we will reevaluate in the coming year and um, going forward from that point. So I wanna tell you what I have set up and what is coming up in the month of December on Strictly Discord. So you get dumped into the welcome chat. I ask that you please go over to the rules and acknowledge and like those. Then we have just a general chat inspiration and your YouTube channel. The only thing I want there is the primary link to your YouTube channel. I don't want chit chat. I don't want anything else shared there. Just your YouTube channel. Then we have YouTube video share and that's where you can share the videos that you create on YouTube and put the link there. Um, I'm trying to keep things as relevant as I can to the channels that I created. When people go in to view those channels, they aren't bombarded with a bunch of stuff that they are not wanting to see. And my channels are very user-friendly and kind of self-explanatory. Um, also, so back up to general chat. If you have any suggestions for a channel or you just want to chit chat in general, that's where you go for that. So let's come down here to, um, my tarot channels or spiritual channels, whatever you want to call them. Uh, first we have the tarot practice and journals, anything that's going on in your tarot practice for the month that you would like to share divination with card related um, subjects can go here or if you want to share what you're working on in your journals you can do that there also spread it out is where to share the deck spreads that you use or if you need recommendations for a deck spread that way they're not clogging up um, some other spaces then I have deck talk anything and everything you want to talk about decks that's the place to do it charm me. I've been doing charm casting readings for clients for several years now. And so if you have questions about charm casting, want to start charm casting, want to share the charms that you found, or maybe how you interpret your charms or uh, get help with interpreting charms, that's 
what that's for. Divination station is everything else not card related as far as uh, divination goes. Your pendulums, your scrying, automatic writing, uh, things of that nature can go uh, there. Spirit speak, I'm a medium, mediumship readings. Um, I'm not doing mediumship readings. I do them <laughs> for clients. But if you want to start to learn how to talk to spirits, um, you want tips on mediumship or you've had an encounter with a spirit and you need help maybe interpreting what was said or something or have questions about that, you can ask those questions in there. Then I added dreams in the astral. This is for anything dream talk that you want to share, talk about, ask or um, share your interpretation about a dream. And if you do astral travel work and you want to talk about that, it's written in the stars, all things astrology. I don't do astrology, but if you do astrology, please feel, feel free to share that there. Ancestor work, self-explanatory. Past life work, self-explanatory. Readings of the day. I'm not allowing others to read for each other on this server. I don't want to go down that slope of dealing with that. However, I do allow collective readings. So if there's a collective reading that you would like to share with everybody, you are more than welcome to put it under readings of the day. Then our final section is which way. If you're thinking about starting a magical practice, I don't care if you thought about it 30 seconds ago and you want to start or you've been doing it for 30 years. I want everybody to feel comfortable in sharing or asking questions or just talking about their practice in general under which way. I don't follow a pagan path. Um, I am very eclectic in my practice. And... I have, over the years, taken the bits and pieces that fit me and my beliefs and, I guess, my ethics. I don't follow Sabbaths uh, generally. I follow seasonal work or trends. And so I want people to feel free to share whatever works for them. I won't tolerate gatekeeping there because everybody needs to feel out their practice and decide what's right for them and what's not right for them without someone telling them they're doing it wrong. So that's really, that's not what that's about. It's about just sharing your practice in general because mine doesn't fit into any category. It, I don't label it even. It's just an eclectic uh, practice. I, I do a little bit of everything. A uh, deity work. If you want to ask questions about or share any deity work, gods, goddesses, archangels, ascended masters, um, you could put that there. Cast a spell or ritual. If you want to share about uh, spells or, or get recommendations about a spell book or creating a spell or whatever that may be, you can share that there, ask questions on that there. I shared about a mirror, quick mirror working that I do when I need to reflect energy back and away from me, especially if I have a lot of negativity coming at me and I can't do um, a big working with all the candles and everything like that. It's a mirror, a piece of paper, and some salt <laughs> is what I used. And this is what I created. I didn't really pull it out of a book. I just did it one day. It worked for me and um, I've been using it ever since. So that's that's what I'm talking about if you want to share anything um, like that. I understand that that work is very private and personal and you don't have to share the personal things. I just shared it in general speak, I guess. Um, and I also asked everybody if they remembered what their very first working or spell casting or whatever was. Mine was a sugar jar and putting a name in a sugar jar to sweeten the communication <laughs> between me and that person. So and that was 20 plus years ago. But um, anyway, so that's what that channel is. Moon magic is anything moon related. If you want to talk about the moon, um, your moon practice, your moon journal, um, your moon tarot spreads, anything moon. I just called it moon magic is something 
fun, I guess. Thrifty witchery, I put here so people didn't feel like they needed to go out and buy all the things. <laughs> because if I could go back in time and get my money back for all the things I thought I needed to buy in order to start any kind of magical practice, I would be thrilled <laughs> if I could do that. Because honestly, I use my kitchen herbs, things I find around in nature, and my cards. I have developed a practice that is really home-based and in the things that I know well, and it works very well for me. And if I feel like adding anything else in there later on, I will, or somebody suggests something, um, I will. Then I have my deck study category, and this is anything of deck studies and if i choose to do one in the future there will be a section there for that if you would like to join please make sure you click the link below because in december i am going to create a channel specifically for omen days those that have been here for the past couple years you know i've talked about omen days to death but in case you happen to be new i'm going to briefly talk about omen days and what's coming up in december the reason I am dedicating it to Discord is because it starts on December 26th and goes to January 6th. I cannot film a new video every day, the day after Christmas, into um, the new year about the omens that I'm seeing in that for that day. So that's why I decided to make it a group activity over on my Discord channel. Um, omens are the things that you divine throughout the day to predict your year ahead. Each day corresponds to a month in, in the coming year. On December 26th would correspond to January and so on and so on. You take things that you see out in nature, maybe notate the weather. I notate a whole bunch of stuff. It has evolved. Um, over the three years that I've been doing this. I started out just paying attention to maybe what the weather was, what was going on outside in nature, but it is usually freezing cold or snowing or something at that time. So it's not like I'm going outside or some, a lot of times the past two years it's been raining and I'm not gonna go out and walk through freezing rain and stuff. So I've been noticing what communication has been like with people that day. And um, if I've come across obstacles for that day and so on, and making notes of those because they end up playing a role in the year ahead. So for example, my omen days for October that were divined on January 4th of this year. It was cold and dry that day. I was very productive and energetic, but I had a clogged dryer vent. I pulled a couple cards. An oracle card was weed out, let go. I pulled a card from the color therapy or color something deck, and it was pearl, connect to the divine for heartfelt advice. And then I, I did playing card divination, and it was communication turned sour, with a disappointed outcome. So what do you do with this? Well, when I saw that it was cold and dry on that day, I had put down in my journal that I felt that I wanted things to be to the point in the month. I was not going to want to wade through a bunch of stuff. I just wanted things cut and dry. That's exactly how this month played out. I didn't want to have to deal with all the extra garbage. I just needed to stay focused and on task. I needed everything to be cut and dry with none of the garbage in between. Uh, the clogged dryer vent, so that's airflow. Number one, it represents an obstacle. Number two, it represents airflow. Airflow, sword suit, communication, thoughts. That all occurred. Add in the cut and dry that I wanted and the clogged dryer vent, there was an obstacle in so many different communications that I had throughout this month because I just wanted to get to the point of things. And I knew because I was the one that fixed the dryer vent that it was going to be me that was going to have to slowly remove that obstacle out of the way in order to get 
productive communication. Do you see what I'm saying of how this gets interpreted? Oh my gosh, and sorry if you can hear my stomach growling on this mic. <laughs> I don't know why it is because I had breakfast. So if that shows up, I apologize for that. That's what I mean by using omens to divine or predict, project ahead of what is coming in the um, upcoming year. And the months that it was, or the days, I should say, that it was rainy, those happened to be very emotional months for me. So my plan is on the Discord that we can share the omens that we see that day. And if you want to share what you think your interpretation of them is, that's fine. If you think that's too personal, that's okay too. I'm not pressure putting pressure on anybody. Um, or if you maybe need a, a suggestion of what that omen could be, you could ask that if you choose to. And <clears throat> that way, Everybody can share their omens the 26th through January 6th. And then as the months come up, if you choose to come back to share throughout the year of if those omens came to fruition for you, like I just did, I didn't go into heavy detail about anything, but I did tell you, you know, how things worked out for me. Um, you can come back and do that too. I just think that would be a really nice thing to, um, do together as a group and if you've never done omens before because i mean i was new at it too at one time then that gives you a chance to try it out for the coming year did i say where i heard omens from um i had learned about omen days oh three i think it was three years ago from jessica and the moon's facebook group because i had never heard of omen days before so you can look that up online um about what Omen Days is, what it represents, and things like that. And then you can choose if you want to join in. I hope I have some people joining in with me in the month of um, the end of December into the beginning of January. I think it will be really nice to share that. So I've rambled on about that long enough. Um, so let's get into some other things. I will have to say that October was the biggest death card month I've had this year that I can recall. Um, I'd have to go back and look through my journal, but it hit the death card, every single aspect. And thank God we're in a universal eight year because I needed every bit of inner strength that I had to get through some of the obstacles and the things that I came up against um, in the month of October. And what I find interesting is I've talked to a couple different people that are friends and everyone has had the same consensus that October so far has been the most difficult month for them out of this entire year. So I don't do astrology. So I don't know if there was a planetary shift or something going on in the stars or with the planets that made October so difficult um, this year. I don't know what it was, but there were several people that I talked to that said the exact same thing. So I'm glad to be shifting and moving into November. And fingers crossed <laughs> that this is a smoother month for me. Uh, this little ghost, I drew myself. <laughs> it's not the best, but I drew and cut it out myself. But I also used Megan Quinlan Studios stencils um, in here. I just, I've, I said it last month. I'm completely obsessed with these stencils right now. I just got in her December, um, not December, her winter, her winter set. So that's what I will be <laughs> filling my journal with is um, some more of her stencils. So the decks that I used to do some of my ancestor work or get some ancestor messages. I used this one again, the Making Magic, Manifesting Your Dreams um, little mini deck. I showed this last month. This is Rock Pool. 
And I think it's so funny that the card that came out as the message from the ancestors is actually the tree of life sigil. True wisdom and making good choices in life <laughs> was the message behind that. So I tried to keep that in the back of my mind as I was going through um, this entire month. Even when I was coming up against that death card energy and these um, difficult omens. And I found it interesting that this is the second month in a row that I have had messages from the divine, my spirit team, whatever you want to call it, surrounding setting intentions. I asked what topic the ancestors wanted to discuss and it was about intentions and the intentions that I'm setting, how they are working for me, um, are they the right intentions and that sort of thing. I really, really laid heavily into this, which comes also into this card of weed out and let go because I had to let go of some things in my life that weren't serving a purpose for me anymore and weren't in alignment with the intentions and the path forward that I want to walk. So this was a, a really powerful reminder of the intentions that I am setting with my thoughts and my actions and so on. And the two cards that I pulled to go along with that, this is from the Memento Mori Oracle, um, is Pop It and Key. And I wrote on mine and I got two of the expansion packs in and I'm going to write all over those also. It's just easier uh, that way. So the, the key was about unlocking an explanation. And this was really, uh, this, the key played a big role this month as far as unlocking things and giving myself freedom to weed out and, and let go uh, of the certain things. And then the other card was pop it, which the keywords I wrote is could be a person or bring to life or even folk magic. And while I didn't do any uh, magical anything this month, I do feel like this poppet was a representation of me and learning what I needed in my life and what I didn't need in my life to basically bring me back to life and not feeling like I'm just going through the motions kind of thing. So I really enjoyed um, the messages that I got from these three decks from uh, the Making Magic, Memento Mori, and the Vintage Wisdom Oracle. I did throw a few tarot cards surrounding uh, this, these cards, and it, it just brought everything into a clear picture. So I enjoyed the message that the ancestors brought forward for me. So another deck that I worked with in October is the Horror Tarot. And this is the first chance I've got to work with this because I actually bought this last Halloween or right after Halloween, I think it, um, it came in, I want to say maybe in November. So I was excited about having a chance to work with this. Did I say it was by Todd Alcott? I think I did. I absolutely love this deck. I love the messages I got from this deck. It was really fun working with it. So I'm super happy to have this in my collection. I like some of the keywords that are found on the cards. Um, he also does the Pulp Tarot, which I have that one, and I thoroughly enjoy that deck also. This one was really fun to work with. I did some collective readings uh, for my group that I have, and... Uh, it was fun using this for that. And I did a couple client readings using this deck too. So it's a winner all the way around in my book. Three other decks that I paired together for guidance from the ancestors for clients this month is the Ghosts and Spirits Tarot by Lisa Hunt, which is mass market. The Soul Trees Oracle by Allison Williams Yee. I believe is the name. Wait, is that right? Yes, that's right. I don't know why I have to look that name up every single time. This is independent. And the Between the Worlds Oracle by uh, Monica Badursky. I love this little oracle. This is another one I wrote keywords on um, so I could get quick messages if I wanted to use it that way, or I could dive into the guidebook. 
I can't remember if I talked about this in September's video. Something tells me I did, but I'm not sure. If you don't have this deck, um, it took me a while to come around to buying it. I just got it this year. This is a great little oracle and the guidebook I feel is really fantastic. But anyway, these three decks I thought worked beautifully with one another and I liked the messages that I got from them. Uh, mostly I paired, I think, these two together or maybe this one and this one. I can't remember exactly how I did um, the guidance post for the month, but however it was, these three do work really well together. And I really enjoyed the ancestor messages that came forward from these three decks for clients. So uh, I'm really happy with that. I will have to say, I think this deck is so beautiful. I do have to look in the guidebook to see what ghost story or ghost lore is being talked about on these cards because I don't know. I really don't know uh, what some of these represent. I mean, of course I know what the magician means, but I don't know what the representation of all the ghosts are on there. So I did look at that just to get an idea to see if it would play a role in the reading in some way. So, but anyway, I enjoy these three decks together. Another deck that I used in readings in October was the Inner Child Oracle by Amanda Lynn Aisling. This is Hay House. And this is the first chance I've had to use this deck. And I think I said when I got this in my collection, when I showed in whatever video that was that I got it in, that I wasn't going to use it for inner child work. I just wanted to use it as an Oracle deck, period not stick a label to it and lock it into one practice and one practice only. I wanted to make sure that this deck was going to be versatile enough for me that I could use it any way that I wanted to use it. And I was not disappointed in it at all. Cause on the back, it talks about, uh, it's infused with the energy and wisdom needed to address past wounds and begin to process of begin the process of self renewal with the guidebook, including exercises and journal prompts to help your healing work. I didn't even open the guidebook. I just wanted to see how I could use the cards, but in the guidebook, it does have your guidance uh, paragraph, an awareness exercise, and then it does have responsive journaling prompts. Some of the most beautiful messages came through this deck and all I did was go by the words on the bottom and what I intuitively felt from the card. And I really did uh, enjoy this. I am going to use this deck more often. And like I said, if I want to choose to go into the guidebook, I will, but I just use it as a, as a general Oracle, I'll say. And on, even on the cards, and I don't know if I'll come across one that talks about, okay, here, write a letter, write a letter to your inner child. When this card came up for a client, I didn't tell her to write a letter to her, her inner child. What I intuitively felt from the write a letter was that she needed to process how she was feeling on paper in that moment, but it wasn't about her connecting to her inner child and doing uh, anything like that. It was just writing things out so she could visually see it. And uh, that's what I mean by I, I didn't go to the book or focus on inner child work with this deck. This deck is gorgeous. It is absolutely uh, gorgeous and I really, I really like using it. Another deck I used for the first time is the Awakened Soul Oracle. This is by Ethany Dawn. I picked this up. I think this deck is going out of print. So I picked this up very inexpensively from her, at, or not Etsy, Amazon, from her Amazon shop uh, directly. I think I got it $13 maybe. I used this for one card readings for some clients and bringing forward the message that the ancestor wanted them to know about. And I just went with the keyword and how I felt about the card. And I enjoyed thoroughly the messages that came through. 
with these cards. They are quite large, but even in the guidebook, this guidebook is so nice. It has an awakened soul story, then it has an awakened meaning, a shadow meaning, an affirmation, and then a personal reflection along with symbols and keywords. So there's plenty to go on in that guidebook, but just off the keyword alone and you know, trust the changes and the transformations that you're going through and, and that sort of thing is there's, there's enough here that you could just go with the keyword and your own intuition. So I really enjoyed using this. So let me show you some of the decks that came in. The first one is my Rhythm and Soul Tarot. I am so happy to have this deck, well, let me turn it this way, in my hands because I have been waiting for this. It was a little bit late, but it was worth the wait. I think the cards are gorgeous. Um, the images are so vibrant. I watched as uh, Stacy Williams and G uh, created these um, on her Instagram page. So I was really excited to have this. I, I can't decide what I want to work with in the month of November. This might be uh, one of them. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I, I do really like this though. So I'm sure there's a bunch of walkthroughs up and ready on um, YouTube already. So I'm really excited to use this. I also picked up the Devil Playing Cards along with that. Uh, Devil's Music. I'm sorry. It's called the Devil's Music. The playing cards that went along with it. The courts are illustrated and the jokers are illustrated. And then the rest is just, you know, your regular set of cards. So I picked that up also. I did pick up a couple decks from the Llewellyn sale and I got the Supernova Tarot by Federico Salas, I believe. It's a low Scarabeo. I fell in love with this deck after Robin, uh, from Robin's Reflections, shared it on her channel and did a whole walkthrough of it. I just was like, I mean, look at the High Priestess lighting a cigarette. I just love it. Um, this puts me in mind of the movie Kinky Boots, which is based on a Broadway play, I believe. But uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how this deck reads for me. Um, it's just so different and uh, cool looking in the imagery. So that's why I picked this up. There's another that puts me in mind of that whole Kinky Boots um, movie. But... I got this one and the other one I picked up is Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. It's also Low Scarabeo. I know this is an older deck, I believe, and I always thought it was strange. And I honestly, I cannot remember whose channel I saw it on. Oh, where they talked about using this deck. Oh, shoot. Um. I don't remember now, Honest, honestly, I don't. I wanna say it was Candy's channel or it may have been Dark Fae Tarot's channel. Oh my gosh, I don't remember. Um, but the images are so interesting on here, kind of like uh, the Supernova Tarot. So I don't have anything really like this, I guess, in my collection, it feels I don't know, it, it feels a little circusy to me in some of the images. Um, with It puts me almost in mind of the Nicoletta Ciccoli tarot with its like strangeness, <laughs> I guess. Um, like that gives me like real like Willy Wonka vibes, but like I said, also circusy. So I haven't um, looked in the guidebook or anything. This just came just the other day, yesterday. So I'm looking forward to uh, playing around with this and seeing what I get from it. So I had to look in the guidebook about this just in case 
you may be interested. There are doors you can walk through into different worlds. The sweet twilight tarot is certainly all of this and more. Twilight is the place between light and dark, day and night. This deck recognizes that tarot is about the place between places and time outside of time. The images speak to the sad knowledge that while twilight is between day and night, it is moving toward night. So the liminal, basically, is, I think, where this deck sits. So that's gonna be interesting to um, maybe look at the readings from that point of view. So let's wrap this video up with a book haul. I almost said deck haul because <laughs> I'm just used to saying that. Uh, Hay House just had a big sale and I didn't pick up any decks from there. I just bought books and I'm really starting to uh, purchase certain things and I'm thinking about my year ahead, things that I may want to try, uh, bring into my practice, see how they work in my practice. So that's really kind of what this deck haul is about. So I did that um, Enia, Enna, Enia Graham, uh, quiz. And turns out I'm a loyalist. I'm a type six. And when I read about what a loyalist was, oh my gosh, does that fit? It really does. I am sometimes loyal to my detriment. And when I commit to things, I follow through, even when I don't want to continue to follow through or really, I guess, shouldn't be following through. Uh, but at the same time, if I'm a good friend to you, I am loyal to you, you know? So, I mean, there's the good and bad in everything really. Uh, so I thought it would be interesting to pick up this journal and work through this journal. However, I thought I had the Enneagram Made Easy book in my cart. I did not. So I am going to pick that up probably during their Black Friday sale. So I can read about um, all the different types because it, it shows in here uh, how, I guess, what is also like your wingman kind of personality and then also what it connects to. So you've got the enthusiast and the investigator, which comes up here to peacemaker, goes down to um, achiever, and then back over here to loyalist. So I wanna be able to read about those different types also, see how that fits, um, what I think about those and that kind of thing. But yeah, this is just a workbook with some prompts and everything and I just found it really interesting and want to dive into this in the coming year. Here's another journal, just journal, journal, journal. <laughs> this is about the gift of gratitude, a guided journal for counting your blessings by Louise Hay. I picked up, when they had their big 50% off sale at the end of summer, I picked up the um, Power of Your Thoughts journal and uh, plan on using that and working through that. I used to do a got a gratitude practice in my journal, my tarot journal every single month. And with my word simplify this year, I stripped all of that away and I never fully got back into that gratitude practice. And sometimes when you step away from it, it's hard to like restart it again. And I really wanna get back into having a regular gratitude practice. So I thought this would help me along with that. This one, this and this one was kind of impulse buys. It's all magic, 365 reflections on astrology, tarot, and manifestation by Eliza Kelly. It says, loaded with 365 thought-provoking exercises, prompts, insights, and musings on astrology, tarot, and manifestation, it's all magic brings you back home, back to you where everything is magic, where the possibilities are endless. So I'm kind of going to use this book Bibliomancy style. And I, I don't wanna start reading through it. I wanna wait until um, the coming year or even maybe towards the end of this year. And I'm just gonna have it on my coffee table and flip to an entry and read it and see if it's like an exercise for me to do or something I can adopt into my day or whatever, because I, I don't really know. I haven't read through, I mean, this one's really short, respect what you already have. 
Um, so that would be like a good mantra to think about and keep in the back of your mind as you go throughout your day. So that is my, my, what my plans are for this. And I got all of these books together very inexpensively. I want to I want to say it was all under thirty dollars, all four of the books. The last one is Craft Your Own Magic, Reawaken Your Intuition, Understand Magical Correspondences, and Create a Meaningful Personal Practice by Cassie Yule. On the back it says, Yule walks you through crafting your own magic using the elements as guides, guideposts. Air for developing intuition, fire, focusing on magic and relationship, water, explaining correspondences, earth addressing ethics and ancestry and spirit on bringing all the elements together so the contents are crafting your own magic ethics and ancestry air intuition fire relationship water correspondences and spirit crafting your personal um practice so i thought this would be an interesting read i'll see how it fits into my practice or maybe there's only certain elements of it that fit into my practice <clears throat> because I mentioned I think earlier I don't know I've had to separate this video into a couple <laughs> different days of filming it but um, I think I said earlier that I have a very eclectic practice so I take the bits that fit me that resonate with me that align with the practice that I do and I add them in where I feel um, they fit so I think that is everything that I'm going to show for today. This video is probably longer than I anticipated it to be. Don't forget about the link to the discord in the description box below. Again, it expires in seven days, especially if you want to hang out with me in December and do those Omen days with me. But there's many other channels on there that you can explore, share your knowledge in, ask questions in, whatever it is that you um, want to do. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you being here. If you like it, you know the drill. Thumbs up and all that good stuff. And until I see you next time, bye.